Well, welcome to part six of State of the Art Underwater Carp Fishing. Um, my name's Danny Fairbrass, I'm here with Nick Hellier, and this time we're going to do a slightly different angle from the other films. We're going to get a few people in and get their opinion on what's actually going on in the swim. So uh, Nick's already managed to have a look on the underwater cameras, and what we're going to do, Nick's going to design a rig that he thinks he's going to catch the fish. I'm going to tie one up, we're going to put it on the end of the rod and wang it out there. But before we do that, I managed to get a couple of days fishing in because we've done so well and got part five in the bag so quickly and uh, I managed to bag a couple. So we're going to have a look at that now um, and then we're going to put one of Nick's rigs out there and see if, um, if he is the supreme angler that, that, <laughs> that we all think he is. So uh, let's have a look at my fishing. So it's the morning of our new session and I'm going to start off with what I finished off with in part five. I'm just going to tie a bag of chopped fusion boilies up now and we definitely noticed that the chop baits are far more readily taken than the round ones so it wasn't the type of boilie we were using it was just the shape of the boilie so it's got that bag tied up so let's show you the rig that I'm going to start off with it's that fella there it's two inches of stiff hybrid with a soft hair not just tied on with a knotless knot size 10 long shank x hook which has been the most successful hook very sharp very straight point and then an inline lead running with a backstop on it because what we've noticed in part five is they're picking the semi-fixed rigs up and they're actually throwing them out of their mouth and the hook's actually coming out of their mouth so we've got a little bit of movement there to hopefully stop them doing that so that's the rig that's going to start one thing we've noticed in part five is that the fish feed differently here to how they feed in horseshoe, how they feed in the blue pool and what's actually happened is fish are picking it up and getting away with it. Now in the other films we didn't find any of that, the fish were picking the bait up and they were hooking themselves almost straight away. Here it's not the case, we've got bigger fish, they're moving around a lot slower and the rigs are having to be a lot more cute. So that's what I'm going to start off with, I think it's going to nail one straight away, they're out in the swim already, Woody's over there just about to chuck a few chops in just to scare them away and then we're going to get this rig out there and see if we can get a bite straight away. So I'm going to hook my bag on. Little things like this make all the difference because if the hair tangles on the cast, especially seeing as I haven't got any tubing on the hook, the hair tangles on the cast, you can end up pulling out the fish. A lot of people put it down to bad luck, but a lot of the time I think there's something you could have done to prevent that loss. So just take that down onto the hook there. Just tie that hair up nice and tight so it can't go anywhere. Like that and then we'll just hook our little bag of fusion chops on the reason I'm using chops is we've noticed with using PVA sticks and even using pellets the fish are feeding so hard over that spot they come in they might not even go for the hook bait they go over the top of it their fin waves around and the bag disperses so I've put chops on just to keep a little bit more around the hook bait for a bit longer so I'm totally changing my approach and hopefully this is going to work and bag us a big one. Slack them right off, let that leader sink. And go and have a look at it myself just to see because Damien says it is a thing of beauty so uh, I'm going to go and have a look at it. Right we're all angling, let's go and have a look. We were all surprised at the amount of time these huge fish stayed in front of the camera and as a result we ended up with enough underwater action and fish in the net to make part five. With another five days left before we had to go back into the real world, we could simply not pass up the opportunity to carry on learning and have the chance of catching more of these magnificent Wellington Country Park fish. We've stayed in the same swim and kept the bait going in overnight whilst we've been getting some well earned rest from the fishing. Because we're midway through the session, the fish are in front of the camera and ready to feed far sooner, so join Damien and myself in the bivvy for more mouth watering underwater action. Have you 
Moskou. Close, getting close, getting close. Oh, he's missed it. It's just a big common and he's missed it. Can you believe it? <laughs> My heart is going absolutely 10 to the dozen. That just completely and utterly missed that little bait. Coming right to left, really. Really? Go on, go on, go on! Oh, I missed it! Oh no! Oh my god! <laughs> like a, a week before. Oh, 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 he's gonna have it, he's gonna have it. Go on the mirror, we want the big mirror. Go on the mirror, he's right on it, he's right on it! Oh no! Oh no! Um, we've had uh, six fish, five, five on camera. Go on. Big mirror. Come on, the big one. Yeah, no, it's not that easy. He's seen something out. He's having it. He's missed it again. I missed it. Look at that. Yeah, just two or three spot faults. That's enough. You know? Oh, <coughs> Lumpy is back. Like especially you've got tight, I mean got no go. gun at all. Oh, oh you <laughs> This one might have a go though. I didn't even think it was on there. Obviously was, because it's moved it's moved the, the stop back to there. That was on mate. Yeah. I said that I looked it, didn't I? But something freshed, the, the rig comes straight back in, something freshed under the trees. I wonder if, I think this, they might be starting to spawn, you know. Well, it's worth persevering, I think, do you? Yeah. With that. Was he on there? Was it, the line had tightened right up, mate, yeah. I'm not convinced he was up. Well, we'll see. Well, yeah, but how's, how's that stop moved back to there? Because he was going like that. As, he, as his head came up, he went like that, and the lead just come back like that. And I thought I saw the hook bait come out of his mouth. Do you think I should have to stop a further back with such a short hook link? Why would that make any difference? Don't know. Well, yeah, nothing's, nothing's for certain nowadays, is it? It's still well sharp, that is. Excellent footage. Mm. I wonder where we should have the um, should have that. I really like that. You know what I mean? Really short. So if it goes in, it's in its mouth. Is 
because I think that's what's happening. I think they're just getting the bait and it's just the hook's not in the mouth. Especially with them long hairs the other day, just getting dicked. I don't agree with you. I really don't. I think they're not, the other day they're not tightening up the hook link and they're blowing the whole lot's going back out again. I, we went this way on part three and part four, shorter air, shorter air, shorter air, and it ain't the one. It did, weren't, weren't doing it. Bit of rain now, excellent. Right, okay, let's get this clipped up and uh, out there again. The super slow motion replay reveals what we couldn't see in real time on the day. The fish is sucked in the hook bait and the hook has caught hold. But as the fish realises something's wrong, it blows out the bait first and you can actually see the hair allow the bait to leave the mouth. It then shakes its head so violently that it actually tears the hook from its mouth and the hook then temporarily catches in his pectoral fin which causes the line to tighten. The hook then pulls out the fin before I even pick up the rod and all of this happens in a split second. I think a curved pointed hook like a wide gate with the hair much closer to the bend may have stayed in in this case. The superb footage shows just how important it is to get the hooking arrangement right. And although the rig hasn't caught a fish for me, it has taught me what not to do. So let's have a look at what we tried during the rest of the session. Beep, 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 beep. 